Hey guys, welcome to part two of our dual lens PTZ overview. If you didn't catch the first part and you have no idea what you're looking at right now, I will leave that linked down in the description below. So definitely check out that video before you watch this one. But today we are going to take a deep dive into the web interface of this camera. We're gonna get a really good feel for how these two lenses work together, and we're gonna see a few cool examples as well. Also, this camera has been super popular and we've received a ton of questions from you guys. So stick around to the end of this video because we will have a frequent, because we will have a frequently, that's so hard to say, because we will have a, be sure to stick around to the end because we will have an FAQ section. Ultimately, I want you to be able to walk away from this video feeling confident that you understand the ins and outs of this dual lens PTZ. Let's jump right in. So here we are logged into the web interface for our dual lens PTZ. This feed on top is a fixed lens, whereas this feed on bottom is a PTZ. And we have full PTZ controls here, either in the sidebar, or you can just click directly on the image. Or if you have a PTZ keyboard, you can use that as well. And we have a 345 degree uh, PTZ pan. We can go to right there and go in the other direction, we can go to right here. So uh, we, uh, we can see pretty much everything, we just can't get that full 360 degree spin out of it. Let's take a look at this tilt. So we have 100 degrees aimed up a little bit, all the way down to negative 10 degrees. It doesn't just go straight down, it actually tilts backwards just a hair. So you really do get a huge range out of this PTZ, uh, all while keeping that fixed lens view at the top so you don't miss anything. Now let's check out this zoom. It is a mini PTZ, so it only has a four times zoom, but that gets you a lot of clarity compared to a wider angle image like we have on the top here. So this is the full range of zoom. I believe it's 2.8 millimeters to 12 millimeters, just like the other mini PTZs in this lineup. Like other PTZs, we do have presets and patrols here. I have other videos showing those features, so I'm not gonna mess with that in today's video. What I wanna do here is just hop right into setting one of these up with this master slave linkage, because out of the box, the two lenses don't communicate with each other very well. Uh, I'll insert a video clip here of what it looks like if you try to set up smart events without calibrating this manually. But that's no problem because to calibrate this, it's actually super easy to do. Come in here to Intelligent Events, Smart, and we will click on Master Slave Linkage. Click this little gear icon and click Calibration. And from here, it's gonna give us two points of view, our panoramic shot and our close-up shot and we can use the PTZ functions here to move this around. I'm gonna keep it fully zoomed in for this calibration because I think it's a little bit easier, uh, but it doesn't matter what your zoom level is set to, it's going to work either way. So the first thing that you're going to do is click manual calibrate, and you can see it has a bunch of coordinates. This is from when I calibrated this earlier, but I'm gonna go ahead and clear those out so I can show you how to do this from a blank slate. The first thing that you're going to do is click add. And what that means is you're going to add a coordinate on your wide lens camera. I'm going to put it on this pole over here. And once you click, it's going to digitally zoom in that image so you can adjust this if you need to. I'm just gonna put it right where those beams cross. And then on your PTZ, you're going to navigate to the same area that you selected with the uh, wide angle lens. You can see we have a little blue crosshairs here. So I'm just gonna line that up perfectly with this cross that we made. And I'm not gonna be too exact here for these purposes since it's just demonstration. Obviously, the more time you take to dial this in, the more accurate it's going to be. Once you have the PTZ set where you want it, click Orient. And that's going to put a, an X coordinate and a Y coordinate for your panoramic view, as well as a PTZ latitude and longitude for where your PTZ is pointed. It's gonna link those two together and help your PTZ know exactly where it should be aiming when certain events happen. You can keep doing this as many times as you want. The more points that you select, the more accurate your linkage is going to be. Again, for demonstration purposes, I'm just gonna put three different points. So let me put one uh, right here in the center, kind of on this yellow line. 
Now I'm going to line this up here on the yellow line as well. Do, 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 do. Again, you can take the time to make this perfect. I'm not going to. Click orient and boom, we have two coordinates. Uh, maybe let's do one more right here on this sign. I will navigate the PTZ over there once more. Whoa, going a little crazy over here. Right about there, click orient. Again, you can keep doing this. I recommend doing this at least six times, three points on the top, three points on the bottom. The more effort you put into this, uh, the better your linkage is gonna be. I am going to go ahead and click finish. Well, I guess I can't do just three, so I'm just gonna speed this up and do three more. All right, there you go. It's gonna let me hit finish with five. And once you hit finish, it's gonna lock in those coordinates and your PTZ and your fixed lens camera should be communicating nicely. And what we can do once we have the linkage set up is we're gonna come back in here to intelligent events and set up a simple line crossing. And you can do this with any of the events, but we're just gonna do this with line crossing for now. Ordinarily in a scene like this, I would uncheck motor vehicles because there is a lot of motor vehicles that drive back and forth on that road. I would only set this up for pedestrian tracking, but just so I can show you guys exactly what's going on here, I am going to leave this on motor vehicle for now. So to get the uh, linkage to work with this, we're going to come into trigger actions and enable master slave linkage. And with that selected, anytime the panoramic camera, in this case, a line crossing, it's gonna tell the PTZ, hey, look over here and track this thing. Okay, so I'm gonna click save on that. And we're gonna come back into our live view and we can watch this in action. You can see that PTZ is trying really hard to keep up with uh, everything that's going on. See this truck just crossed that line and the PTZ snaps over to try to follow the truck. It's hard to do with uh, cars just because they go a little bit faster than the PTZ can keep up with. But I think you can kind of see the idea of what's going on here. Uh, and I, I am going to throw in some actual examples of this working with human beings because, I mean, I understand this is a little bit jarring to look at. So I will insert those clips right here. Now let's talk about the active deterrence mode. If we come back into our line cross detection, we can see that we have uh, under trigger actions an alarm output. We can do an alarm sound or an alarm light. Again, this does have white lights on the PTZ. So if you select the alarm light to happen, a duration of uh, let's say 30 seconds, Anytime that event is triggered, those lights are gonna start flashing. And since the white lights are located on the PTZ and not on the panoramic lens, uh, those lights will be able to follow whatever the camera is tracking, which is pretty cool. And we can also do alarm sounds here. By default, this comes with 10 sounds already included. Uh, and we can see what those sounds are here in video and audio. Audio, audio file. The sounds are things like, you're in a restricted area, please leave, you are in the danger zone, do not approach, no parking, danger deep water, danger do not climb, welcome warning. But you can now add your own sounds. We did a short video on that a couple weeks ago with Kyle. He showed you just how to do this, so I'm not gonna show it in this video, but I will leave that link down in the description below because that's a really cool feature of these active deterrence cameras that now you can add your own sounds. You can sit there and yell at people to get off your lawn. Other than that, these are the same active deterrence features that we're used to seeing on Uniview active deterrence cameras. There is one final thing I wanna look at with this camera before we wrap up, and it's how to get this on an NVR. So I'm actually going to log into my NVR here. 
And I already have this added to the NVR. You can see here, uh, it's still <laughs> trying to track those cars like crazy. Uh, it's got a weird aspect ratio here for some reason. Probably has to do with my computer. I'll just leave the PTZ controls popped out. It gives us a normal aspect ratio. But you can see here we have two different channels uh, taken up by this camera. And how we would set something like that up is we would come into camera and here's the two cameras that we're working with. You would come in here and change this from plug and play to IP address. Of course, we're gonna leave it at the Uniview protocol. Input the IP address for your PTZ, which you can find using the Easy Tools program. I will leave a link down below to all of our Uniview downloads. Pop in your username and password here, and here is the key. We have this remote camera ID. Sometimes it's called camera number or something like that, depending on your Uniview, NVR, and firmware. All we would need to do is change this to either one or two. Remote ID one is going to be the wide angle lens on top and remote ID two is gonna be the PTZ on the bottom. So what do you guys think of this camera so far? Be sure to let us know down in the comments below. We would love to hear your thoughts. And of course, if you have any lingering questions, leave those down there as well. Speaking of questions, we do have a few more of your questions to answer before we wrap up this video. So let's do that right now. First, the most common question we've gotten is, does this camera work with the EasyView mobile app? The answer to this question is not yet. I mean, sure, you can add this camera to the app just like you would a regular camera, but currently it only pulls in the fixed lens feed. You can't get both the fixed lens and the PTZ on your phone at this time, but we've been promised by Uniview that this is coming. There will be a, an update to the app and an update to the camera's firmware that will allow for both lenses to come into the app. We don't know when this is coming, but be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us across social media, sign up for our newsletter list, all that jazz, because as soon as that update hits, we will tell you guys about it. Does this camera work with the Easy Station computer program? Yes, it does. Unlike the EasyView app, the Easy Station computer software does pull in both lenses just fine. What about the OnVIF protocol? Does this work with third-party NVRs? Well, first of all, let me say that we never really recommend using a specialized camera with the OnVIF protocol, simply because OnVIF typically only pulls in camera feeds, maybe audio feeds, and not much else. You won't have full compatibility with OnVIF with any camera, let alone a specialized camera like this. Now, that said, in theory, this should work with a third-party NVR if all you want to do is pull in the camera feeds. You won't be able to set up linkage or anything like that with the NVR. However, you could always log into the web interface and set up the linkage that way, and then just use the NVR for recording. There is a caveat here. Uh, the NVR that you use does have to support multiple channels per device, otherwise, Again, it's just gonna pull in that first channel, which is the fixed lens. So if you wanna use this with a third-party NVR, I can't guarantee that it's gonna work. If you have any questions about compatibility, you can always reach out to us. My number one recommendation is gonna to be to use this with a Uniview NVR. Okay, if I can't get this to work with OnVIF, what about the RTSP feed? Well, our techs have been testing this out since we've gotten this camera in, and we have yet to figure out a way to pull the RTSP feed of the PTZ. You can pull the RTSP URL of the uh, fixed lens on top, just like you would with a regular Uniview camera. We've tried changing the channel number in the URL to see if we can pull the feed of the PTZ. We haven't figured it out yet, so we don't think it's possible. If we do discover something that allows us to pull the PTZ feed in through an RTSP URL, we will definitely keep you guys updated. That's it for this video. Again, if you have any lingering questions, please leave those down in the comments below or reach out to us. You can always email us, give us a phone call, use the chat functions on our website. We're always happy to help you out. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Happy installing and I'll catch you in the next one.